Nikki. Well, first of all, it's nice to meet you. My name is Dawn. I'm from Medawani. Okay. Um, we're based in India. And India? India. Wow. In You're about halfway through your tour at this point. Yeah. Um, and if uh, tonight was any indication, you're getting a great response from fans. Yeah, we've been out for over a month, and, and bands don't really get to play that long in the music industry anymore. It's usually the way it is with most bands now. They'll fly out and do a festival or in a couple of shows, and then fly home, and then fly back out and fly <laughs> home. Like the days of a tour bus tour right. are rare now. So it's we're very lucky to be playing every single night, and uh, we just been at, we've been out in Canada, and America for over a month, and then in September we do New Zealand and Australia, and awesome. um, after that it's I I I've got to finish my book. <laughs> I, I'm, I've been working on my book, and the tour we keep getting tours, which is great. But I really can't work on my book while I'm doing this. Right, <laughs> I understand. There's too much going on. <laughs> the, ro the road is way too much activity right. to um, sit and write a book. So you uh, notice that your set list, um, you're pulling a lot of um, older music along with your new music. I just I just do whatever I want. There's this thing I do. It's called whatever I want. <laughs> <laughs> that works. That's cool. But uh, but um, tonight we did a song that we never ever did before, and to me that is so exciting. I, I mean, I have been playing these songs for 30 years, no exaggeration, and. To play new songs is very exciting, and there's like a feeling of like what's going to happen, like what, like this could suck, this might suck, or this might be great. I don't know, <laughs> but but I like to try new things. Yeah. yeah. So tonight we did a push away, and I, everybody's telling me it sounded great. So maybe we'll keep doing it. Maybe we'll do some other songs. Cool. Do you yeah. switch it up from show to we show? We do. I used to do the same set every night, and I got really bored. And so now we every night we change it. Um, there's a new song we have called "All My Friends Are Dead," that really is a strong song. But but also yeah, yeah, because I really hate that. Oh, thanks. That's an article. You're welcome. <laughs> My daughter hates that song. <laughs> I really, Not a very happy. No, she doesn't like the title, um, <laughs> honey. It's kind of like making a joke a little bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um. <laughs> If I was seven years old, putting out a record, I wouldn't write a song called that. <laughs> it would be My Little Pony, Fluttershy. <laughs> it wouldn't be All My Friends Are Dead. That's a, from a different part of my life. <laughs> that kind of goes with, you know... I don't want to <laughs> but, um, but, but we should do that every night, but you know, there's Taking Back Tomorrow, which is a different feel, but that gets the crowd going, too. So I just do a different set every night and I, I find that it keeps things more exciting, it keep, keeps the band on their toes more. Right. If it becomes the same thing every night, it's just too repetitive. Like, yeah. It becomes like stale, you know? Yeah. Speaking of set lists, um, there was a recent incident um, that made a lot of press with oh, yeah. a young man stealing something off the stage. Mm -hmm. um, have you just um, try, try to take any precautions to deter that kind of behavior? Well, not to come off... Uh, I always have to be careful how I answer things. <laughs> you know, if a guy comes on my stage, he should probably be scared of me, maybe, more <laughs> than me be scared of him. I don't want to say that, but, I mean, I'm, you know... All right. I'm not really scared of anybody. Um, well, I'm, I'm not <laughs> trying to imply that you're scared of no, anyone. No, I mean, it's, it's a, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. When we play a smaller place like that incident in Seattle, it's just a too small a place yeah. for, for our band. And But you can't predict it. You don't know what's going to happen. Like like tonight in Baltimore, I thought there would be more people only because I, I played her in the past right. and it's been jammed. Baltimore. But I've read in the press what Baltimore is going Baltimore. through. Hey, can I just, <laughs> what, however you say it. You know, what it's going through, you know, maybe rock and rollers don't want to hang out in downtown Baltimore right now. 
like, no, and, it's and driving around here, it's like, what the? F- this is a rough area. Like, <laughs> it's not the same as when I played here right. before. And I was at so, your yeah. show in '82, so. Yeah, oh, before. at the network? You were not. Uh, I'm 56 I, years old, yes, I am. I may have you been there myself. Ma- you saw Madame X at the network. <laughs> oh, my God. Do you have any pictures from that? Uh, or probably, anything? Or they're posted? probably on uh, 35 millimeter, which I don't know how to put That is on crazy. <laughs> computer. Darling, he. <laughs> he saw me. Tiana, when well, he, Daddy, well, I saw him. When I he played here when I well, I was a little older. <laughs> I was about fifteen the first time I played this city in a band called Madame X, and he was at the show. Yep, that's amazing. I used to go to network so myself. You did? Yeah. Well, I I gotta <laughs> tell this story. I gotta tell this story. I I my voice. I, if you remember, I had this high pitched one note scream thing that was. Insane! I, I can't do it anymore. <laughs> that, but I used to start the show, Madam X, say, say, just walk out there and do that. And but I would screaming. blow my pipes out for the rest of the. I, I wasn't a talented vocalist, like like doing ballads and stuff. Now I was like a little kid, but I had this freak note that was <laughs> the loudest, craziest, <laughs> highest pitch Man, sound, like like that. Mariah Carey, <laughs> only like yeah. way louder. Yep. <laughs> But it was, it, but so so at the network, my best memory of that, I came out, I hit that note, and they all ran up in the middle of the song from the bar, <laughs> said you stop, and they held up a wine glass and they swore to God that I shattered the glass with that that one note, and they actually made a display out of it. Mm-hmm. I remember out of it. I so it. Sebastian Bach came out and hit this note, and this glass shattered, and that is a, one of my. Best memories. I was right side stage, and all of a sudden, everybody's coming. It's like, you just bought it because you didn't know what was happening. Right, because it was, a, it was a note that was extreme. It was extreme. Speaking of uh, all those years ago, when yeah. you started out in rock and roll, did you think that you would go as far as you have? Here's how I can answer that. I just watched uh, the Frank Sinatra documentary on HBO, and at the end of his life, they asked him, they go, hey, Frank, you know, when you look back in your whole life, you know, what are you most proud of? What, how would you describe yourself or whatever? And his answer was, you can watch this on HBO, he goes, I, 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 I'm a saloon singer. A saloon singer. That's what Frank said. He goes, I spent my life as a saloon singer. I sing for people, and I make them happy, and I was a good saloon singer. And I sat there watching him. This is Frank Sinatra. At the end of his life, he could, he looks back and he considers himself as a singer that sings in saloons, and that's what he did. And I don't. And he was proud of it. So I'm going, dude. If Frank Sinatra can be proud to, to say that, I can. I can be proud. I'm, I'm. You say, did you think it would go this long? I no, but but it's just like I'm. You know, it's like what Frank says. He's like I'm. That's what I do. I get up, I put the mic in my hand, I sing songs, and people get into it, and I'm very lucky to do what I love. Like, I love, I love it. I love, I love rock music. I love it with all my heart, so. That's great. What could, that's, what could be better? It's, uh, it's obvious that you are a fan. I am a fan. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you, I've heard you mention recently that um, you're looking for an old school production on your next album. Yeah, yeah, I am. Um, Give Them Hell is a really modern sounding yes, record. Yes, it is. Have you started writing your follow-up at this point? Um, I have, honestly, I have two songs that I would sing to right now. One was written by DJ Ashba. That's an incredible tune. Uh, and the other song is one by Devin. But I I am not thinking about making a record right now. I've I've... Put out Angel Down, Kicking and Screaming, Give Him Hell, not to mention Apocalypse Now. Like, I've put out so much stuff that I feel like I've, I've made a lot of solo records. That, you know, people got to catch up with it a little bit. <laughs> I, I've made a lot of solo records, and my fans love them. But I don't think they realize how much time and effort and money and attention to detail and all of my sp- everything is on those records. 
My whole heart and soul is on there. And it takes so much of your essence and spirit to, to make that happen. Like, to make a record is... People don't get it. You just you don't just walk in there and make a record. It's, it's like this whole crazy process that takes years. It t- give them how it took two years. Wow. So people say you doing a new record. I mean, I I will. I definitely will someday. Like a hundred percent. Right. It's just I don't think people really get how much it takes to make a record that's good. <laughs> right. No, I'm sure the, the, the average fan wouldn't they have don't any understand. idea. It's just everything I got, and I, to be honest with you, I got to recharge my batteries a little bit. I have given everything I had. I, I am so exhausted, not from tonight, from thirty years of this. Right. I'm, I am actually. I was catching up. I'm going to. I'm going to admit to you. I need to recharge my shit. In order to make a record that is as good as that record. I'm sorry, I owe you eight bucks now. I said a bad word. <laughs> we have a swear jar. So I, I, owe, I got seven bucks in the show. I, I, it cost me seven bucks. <laughs> but I will do a record someday. I'm telling you fans, go buy the ones I already did. Not, I'm not, not that I'm complaining or anything. I'm saying it's going to be a while before you get right. a new record for me. Well, I don't. I'm not going to rush it. I'm also going to tell you this right now. I listen to music from the '70s exclusively. You do you ever hear me put anything else on, baby? Never. Never. It's because of the sound of those records, like Rock and Roll Over, or or okay, eight '80s Van Halen, Women and Children First, 1980, or Steely Dan, or Phoebe wow. Snow. The way these records sound wow. is. Phoebe Snow is a name I haven't heard in years. <laughs> well, I'm a singer. So when I get on a seven-hour plane flight, right, mm-hmm. I'm not going to listen to some death metal <laughs> from 2011. Right, right. I, I'm going to want to, I want something that's going to hit me, mellow me out for a long plane flight. The sound of Phoebe Snow's voice is like being massaged wow. the way she sings. Yeah, I remember her. Poetry Man and mm-hmm. Harpo's Blues. And she hit so many notes in like one little word. Like, ah, 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 ah. Just like, da, na, 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 na. Like, right. embarrasses people. <laughs> like when Kanye West says, I'm the greatest rock star, Phoebe Snow had more talent in her left fingernail than fucking Kanye West. Okay, nine, nine bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about Kanye West that's getting me fired up, honey. He's kind of an idiot. I agree. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I'm the greatest rock star. Just because you say that means you're not. Rock stars don't go around telling people they're rock stars. Right. <laughs> they already they get people telling them that. Uh, well, hopefully your your next album, I'll still be writing with Mel Wani. I was lucky enough to write the review for Give Em Hell. And oh, thank you. It was... Uh, it was a hit. Awesome. Liked it. Thank you. Um, I, I, I was, I was, huh? You actually answered her reply. On <laughs> you reposted oh. my review. So oh, whoever runs your Facebook page. I run my Facebook page. Oh, awesome. Then you re- reposted my review. Well, here's how this works. You're nice to me. I'm nice to you. <laughs> and vice versa. <laughs> that's how I live. Awesome. That's how you know? <laughs> well, that's pretty simple. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, your autobiography, you said you're not done with it. No, but I'm... I'm, I'm you have I've a deadline, done, I would I've imagine, because it's um, it's been it's been put out in the media that it's be coming out in just a few months. Yeah, but it might be pushed back to March, just a couple more months. I, I, it's just a monumental project. It's so yeah. it's just I can it's just imagine. big. It's a big <laughs> four hundred pages. It's like I go to I go to try and proofread it, and it's. Long time to proofread 400 pages. <laughs> I would imagine, but I, but I love creating things. I is love, that something you've it. always just wanted to do, or is it something that came? Yeah, about? I've read every rock bio there is, and I love reading rock biographies. I'm one of the only rockers that doesn't have a book. Really, every rocker yeah, has a book, true. right? So it's about time for a Skid Row book. There's none. There's 
they'll never write one. So does it surprise so you will. sometimes <laughs> to go back and remember and go, "Wow, I really did that." Well, you know, one thing that's very evident <laughs> in my life when I read this book is I've I've gotten in a lot of fights. <laughs> Hang on, go. okay, all right. Okay. Know, but we oh, go. you're driving? Yes. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, we got yes, it. we do got to, yeah. Okay, I've well. i a lot of